you for having me here. Right, um, so Five House is a housing provider. It is one of the largest housing providers for people living with HIV in Toronto and uh, you know, all over Canada. Um, this presentation is particularly for women, uh, HIV, women HIV and aging, but with a um, housing perspective, from a housing provider perspective. So this is our research team, and I'm not going to read all of them. Okay. Uh, these are the partner agencies who were on our research team. Uh, this study was funded by Canadian Institutes of Health Research, and we acknowledge the support that we received from OSTN. Uh, this is the structure of the presentation, so a brief overview, uh, ethics and methodology, issues and challenges, and then summary of findings and recommendations and impact. So housing is an important determinant of health and substandard housing in general has been, um, it has been a major public health issue. So an increasing body of evidence has associated housing quality with morbidity, chronic illness, poor nutrition, and mental health issues. In the Canadian context, Positive Spaces Healthy Places found that people with HIV without appropriate housing experience worse physical and mental health. And studies from the United States also show that stable housing leads to better health and also saves medical costs. So the objectives of this study were to understand the housing experiences of aging women living with HIV, to identify the individual and structural level barriers, um, specifically housing barriers, and issues of stigma that they contend with, and then document the variation in their experiences. The ethics uh, approval was obtained from Wilfrid Laurier University. This was a community-based qualitative study, and participants had to be living with HIV, identify as women, be over 40 years, and live in Toronto or GTA. We collected uh, data over a period of 12 months, and 39 in-depth interviews were conducted by two peer research associates, and they were trained in qualitative met uh, data collection methods and interviewing skills. Data were analyzed using thematic analyses, and PRAs were involved in the analysis as well. 51% of our participants identified as African, or from, they were from African-Caribbean backgrounds, and five from South Asia, five were Aboriginal, and six Euro-Canadian or uh, Caucasian. Now, 18 of the women were over 50 years of age. 48% of the women were living with in subsidized housing at the time of their interview. 36 were paying market rent, and 8% were owners, and 8% didn't say. So for this presentation, I am focusing primarily on the housing concerns of women over 50. The reasons identified for uh, dis dissatisfaction with housing were generally small living spaces, high rent, lack of cleanliness, limited income uh, support, safety, violent family situations, and abusive relationships. So one woman uh, who was experiencing uh, abusive uh, behavior from her son said, I want to move out because I have a child who abused me, so I don't want to stay there anymore. You know, I'm a person who keep everything inside. If your own son do something to you, where are you going to go and talk about it? Where? You'll keep it and you cry and you're crying, crying for days. While she wanted to move out, she was still waiting for her turn on the Toronto housing waiting list. So the woman who was satisfied with their housing reported sat satisfaction because of similar reasons. Um, safety of the buildings and the neighborhood that they, they were living in, proximity to services, affordable costs of the housing, and the clean buildings and cleaner units. So one of the most frequent barriers was the long wait list for subsidized housing. And others were affordability, health-related anxieties due to lack of afford affordable and stable housing. Women also expressed anxieties about future health, ability to maintain housing due to mobility, and even expressed anxiety about discrimination in the future. So one woman talked about how the substandard housing impacted her health, and she said, I need the housing. I put my application into Housing Connection 10 years ago, and up until now, they still do not have a place for me to live. 
and the place where I live now, every winter time, I could not afford the hydro bill. One time it was so cold, it cost me $900. So I was totally broke for that year. And for the following year, I did not turn it on much and then ended up with pneumonia. So now I end up with pneumonia every winter. Now there was a recurring concern about affordability of housing and inability of women as they got older to be able to afford it as some were supporting the children as well as their aging parent, something that Patty had just brought up, the caregiver burden. So one woman shared, the only concern the market trend seems to be increasing and I don't know where I am on the waiting list. So it's a struggle every month. You've got to take care of your mother who's a visitor she don't have status in this country and you've got to pay her bills, her hospital and medical bills as well. So when you look at it, it's not easy, it's a challenge. Another woman mentioned the health issues she was having and the concerns about having better housing to feel stable. And she said, I'm having some major surgery later this year, which will keep me, uh, keep me probably bedridden for three to four months towards the end of the year. So I'm really concerned about possibly getting into better housing situation before my surgery, because then I'm looking at a lot of rehab and physio. Funds are really tight. Housing is hard. Costs are really hard. I can't afford it anymore. Concerns were also expressed by many about housing that does not meet their mobility needs. One 51-year-old woman uh, relating her challenges with mobility said, I continue to have problems with my knees. We live in a place with an upstairs and a downstairs. The bedrooms are upstairs. So I think if issues with my knees get worse, then I might have problems going up and down the stairs as easily, so I think about that. And a number of participants um, expressed similar mobility concerns. Having experienced stigma and discrimination before, women expressed concern about, about lack of housing for seniors living with HIV. And one, one woman said, uh, so like say now, people are living longer, and say if I, if I live until I'm 80 years old, do I have a home, like a senior's home? Living with HIV, my concern would be that I have seen stigma and discrimination. If I do live longer, what happens if my kids aren't going to take care of me? Am I put into senior's home? Then what happens? We should have something for older people living with HIV as well. A number of women over 50 expressed interest in employment, and some women experienced age as a barrier to finding employment. Those who were currently employed also expressed worry that because of their health, they may not be able to work for long, and that would put their housing at risk. So one woman said, I've applied for other jobs, and you know, I don't get interviews, and I find out that they have hired people that are much younger have less education than me and less experience than me. And I think, how's that happen? Location of housing with proximity to health care services, which was, uh, which all participants wanted, but it sometimes becomes an isolating factor for women as well. Uh, one woman said, very expensive, it's a nice area, it's quiet. It's a lot better than where I was before. It's just expensive. And I, I feel I'm fairly disenfranchised from my family. Everybody is far away from me, so I don't see anybody. I don't have a lot of friends, so I'm in a new neighborhood with nobody really, and it's pretty isolating and pretty lonely. Now, while this presentation focused primarily on housing-related concerns, discrimination based on HIV and aging, difficulty or a lack of interest in forming new relationships due to HIV and aging were also recurring themes. So I covered that briefly in the summary of findings because of shortage of time. Uh, I had mentioned small living spaces as a reason for dissatisfaction, but I did not elaborate that uh, many women expressed concerns about accommodating their dependents from back home when they joined them here in Canada. Also, women who were looking after the children and their older parents expressed similar concerns. So to summarize, older women struggled with current housing situations and feared their housing will not be affordable, safe, or meet their health needs. Racialized older women experienced additional challenges due to limited culturally responsive housing and services. And there was need for all basic amenities to be within the units that was identified by older women. 
women experienced multiple levels of stigma and discrimination in our, uh, among our participants due to ethnicity, gender, and age. And even physician-initiated conversations about sexual activity diminished based on advancing age. Forming new intimate relationships was a challenge for the participants and because of disclosure, uh, age, related cultural expectations, and experiences of violence and aging-related body image issues. Financial hardships undermined their ability to support their families and themselves, and it impeded uh, access to employment or prevented them from re-entering workforce, and inadequate social assistance made it difficult to find suitable housing. So based on the findings, the recommendations uh, were made for housing service providers, healthcare service providers, and other service providers, as well as research, uh, re researchers, but for this presentation, I'm only focusing on recommendation made to the housing service providers. So one of the recommendations was to advocate for greater recognition at federal, provincial, and municipal level for affordable housing, as well as recognition of health and in income assistance issues of older HIV-positive women explore creative solutions to house multi-generational households, explore creative solutions to accommodate accessibility issues of women aging with HIV within their homes, collaborate with specialized service providers and engage older women in development of their own care plans, collaborate with aid service organizations and long-term care facilities to build an agency culture that is well informed about issues of older HIV positive women and to develop a culturally sensitive process of coordinated access to housing and healthcare system. Now, very briefly, um, I wanted to discuss one of the impacts of this study. And the findings of the study were presented to housing providers, and one of the outcome was that Medicine Community Services, Five House, and Wood Green uh, came together to respond to a city RFP for a new housing development uh, to build a nine-story building. And while we won't know the result of that uh, uh, RFP until the summer, the development of the partnership in itself uh, is quite a significant step. If approved, Five House will be responsible for referring 20 to 25 families for multi-bedroom units. And that will address the issues of multi-generational households for, for some of the families. 15 of the units would be deep subsidy, and 10 units will be eligible for City of Toronto rent allowance for up to $400. These are some of the pictures. This is a picture of the building, what it might look like, and the next picture is about um, the unit, what it might look like. Thank you. <laughs> 